Hello everybody, I'm Driftwood. Welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to draw text to the screen uh, and how to make damage pop up. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's jump into a game, enter the scene, mute the music. So when I click on this, uh, I click the left click, I'm firing a laser. When the laser collides with the enemy ship, they take 10 damage and we got this little 10, uh, negative 10 pop up. So they're taking damage. When the ship collides with the player, boom, we're taking 20 damage and we got a little damage pop-up to show the numbers. So that's basically all we're going to be making. There's a couple ways to do this. It's actually really simple, all ways that I've, fi uh, that I've figured out how to do it. So let's get into it. Um, create a couple fonts. Just create a new font here. Go to the font, right-click, create a new one. Give it whatever name you want. Um, just call it like FNT underscore something. Um, whatever font you want. Make it small, like five or six. We can actually delete this one because I don't need another one here. Yep, get rid of that one. I'm using this one with a six size and AA on. I'm using Eras Bold ITC. I'm just calling FNT underscore Eras. Doesn't really matter. I'm sure you can figure out how to create a font. Okay, so once you've got your font created, we're going to create a new object for when the laser collides with the um, with the enemy ship. So I'm calling it object laser damage pop up, but you can call it whatever you want. OBJ underscore laser damage pop. Um, it actually doesn't need to create uh, a create event because image X scale and image Y scale doesn't affect it because it's actually not an image. It's a font. So um, we're, we're not giving it an image. It doesn't need an image. Um, you can use X scale or Y scale to determine uh, a length of time it takes to destroy it like for right here I'm using image alpha it doesn't have an image alpha um, it does but it's uh, it's not going to affect the font at all it's not going to make the font fade out because it's not ex actually an image but you can use this to work as a timer uh, to make it disappear you could also use an alarm so you saw it work before it, it, the font would disappear let's get rid of this right and I'll show you what happens without some way to remove it you can pretty much guess what's going to happen. It's just going to show the the text on the screen, and it's never going to go away. It's just going to keep on moving. See it? We're changing the X and the Y, so it's constantly moving, but it never disappears. And that's probably not what you want. So you need some way to get rid of all of that font, uh, all of that, all of the damage pop-up. So I'm using Image Alpha. You can do that. Image alpha equals image alpha minus 0, 0.0 whatever. Increase this number right here, or you know, subtract more. It'll disappear faster. But let's go ahead and get rid of that, and let's try it with an alarm. So another way you can make it work is you can say alarm 0 equals however many frames you want it to last. This is an even easier way, actually, because you can predict exactly how many frames you want to go by. So let's say one second. It disappears in one second. So alarm 0 equals 60. And then we'll go ahead and add an alarm zero. I haven't tested this, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work the same. Instance underscore destroy. Mm, ba boom. And then after 60 seconds, 60 frames goes by. After it's been created, 60 frames will happen. And then the alarm goes off and it kills itself. And it removes the font. So let's see if that works the same. Let's uh, enter the game. Turn up the music. And then let's see. Nope, that's not working. <laughs> Why is that not working? Alarm zero equals 60. Alarm zero. Instance destroy. Well, that should have worked. I don't understand why that doesn't work. But it does work with image alpha. There's plenty of ways to do this. This way works perfect. So just do the image alpha way. And then this is about, uh, let's see, 10, 20, 30... So this is like, it disappears in like under a second, right? Because 30 frames would be 0.99, and then when it gets to zero, we're doing a conditional statement. If the image alpha is less than or equal to zero, then destroy it. So that works right there. We can actually get rid of that alarm. Boom, delete that event. Okay, so just use that, and there's you could uh, you could use many methods to do that. That's one way that works for me. Okay, so I'm using x equals x plus 0 0.05. That's going to make it move a little bit to the right every frame, and then y equals y minus 0 0.15, and as you subtract from the y, it goes up, so it's going to be scrolling in an upright motion. 
mostly up but a little bit to the right so that's basically it now we're gonna jump over to the draw step this is actually where it's drawing uh, the font so we're gonna say draw set font so we're gonna say which font do we want to use uh, we're gonna use that let me scroll in a little bit for you we're gonna say draw set color and you could use any color you want I'll middle click on this right here and it shows you a bunch of preset colors that you could use right there and you could put in your own colors as well so really really uh, versatile there ignore all the commented stuff out um, then underneath that we're gonna say draw text extended X uh, Y minus 12 and then we're gonna put a comma uh, we're gonna say string object status dot laser power times negative one now what this this whole thing right here is doing is it's taking a variable that's stored inside this and multiplying it to make it a negative number to show the damage so I'm storing the value of how strong the laser is inside of an object called obj underscore status so let's look at this on the create step right here I've got laser power right here right so however strong this is when it collides with the ship it's dealing that much damage so we, we need to show um, like that number pop up so if we do something else to change this number then that number will re be reflected right here we could just put 10 right but what if we want to make get a power up that increases the strength of our laser it would still say minus 10 when we're doing like 20 damage or something so by doing it this way if you change the power of your laser somehow in the middle of game it's it will show that change in the number that's dealing so we're using um, calling the object a variable inside the object multiplying that power by negative one to give you that minus whatever and then we're drawing that as a string so uh, it's a variable but we're strong we're drawing it as a string we're gonna put a comma we're gonna put three and then 32 now let's look at all these parameters so when you draw text extended it's asking for a X position a Y position we're gonna say wherever this one was called use that X and Y and we're gonna say this is the string we want that's what the text we want to draw and then we're gonna say um, the separation between each text we could actually increase this a little bit more let's change that to maybe like six pixels how far do you want each pixel to be each uh, thing to be drawn in front of like how far apart do you want them uh, and then the width of the entire thing so this whole thing is going to be crammed into 32 pixels um, you could change that to just be whatever you want let's change it up we change it basically doubled it there to see how that would affect it but that's pretty much it for that and, and if you want to um, do uh, another damage pop-up for when the ship collides into the player you just basically you can duplicate this event um, and call it something different and then right here instead of this value you would just put a different value you know the however strong uh, the ship colliding into the player is going to be so that's the next uh, object which we'll take a look at next so this object is right underneath it object ship collide damage pop-up doesn't need to create it does because that doesn't affect it it doesn't need uh, image X scale Y scale I was just trying different things so it doesn't need any of this we're gonna use image alpha just to um, kind of trigger when it goes away so all we're doing is adding a step event we're gonna say image alpha equals image alpha minus whatever you want the higher the number that you're subtracting the faster it'll disappear we'll do that same uh, kind of fade out up and to the right you can change this around to make it go down it can go you know uh, up and left down and left down and right you can just get rid of it and it'll just stay where it's at however you want to manipulate that then we'll do our conditional statement if the image alpha is less than equal to zero get rid of it instance destroy so that's just our timer basically and on the draw we're doing the same thing we're selecting our font we're selecting the color we're selecting what we want to draw X the same location of this object X Y uh, minus 12 in the string and then when you want to actually put in whatever you want right there you just put it in double quotes and it'll draw that right there and then you put the separation however many pixels between the characters and then the total width of the of the string <clears throat> of the string you're drawing so this time for this one, um, I want the collision to be 20 at all times because it's actually a fifth of our life. So this isn't going to be a number that changes, like collision power isn't going to change. When a ship collides in the player, it's always going to be 20 in this game. But you saw how to make that a variable number to be whatever you want. You just say string, which is a function that will turn any number or value um, into a string value. 
and you just select what variable you want to call. So I'm calling laser power that's stored in this object and we're multiplying that power by negative one which is going to just make it a negative number. So if it's 10, it'll turn to negative 10 and so forth and so on. So that's pretty much it. Now, how do you get these objects to appear? Well, we just do an instance create a uh, layer. So on the, the laser, object laser, when the collision happens with the object frigate, which is the enemy, then we're going to say with other, you know, take away um, the HP from this, from the other object, which would be the frigate, the enemy, based on however, however how much power it is. So we're calling this variable stored in this object. And we're going to say instance create layer, which is a function that calls another object. And we're going to say X position, Y position. So call it right on this other object. We're going to say, select the name of the layer we want, which I'm calling instance layer two, and then put that in double quotes, another comma. And we're going to say call OBJ underscore laser damage pop-up or whatever you called it. So now it's going to call that damage pop-up and also other things that you just tell it to do. So also um, destroy um, the laser and um, show another little, uh, show another object for when it hits. So that's other stuff, uh, which we already went over, but we're doing that one right there. And you do the same thing on the enemy frigate when it collides with the player. You're gonna say, um, take away this much number, this value, from this object's variable, you know, remove 20 from the player's health, and instance create layer, x, y, instance layer 2, objects uh, dust, that's to deal the, the, um, the little animation, but to show the text pop up, we're going to use with other again, we're going to say with other, that way we can get the x and the y of the player ship, because we're colliding with the player, so we're going to take the x and the y of the player ship, we're going to say on this layer, and call obj underscore ship collide damage pop and whatever you called it. And so now when the, the ship, uh, the frigate collides with the player, it's going to, you know, do that, which this actually doesn't need to be with other um, because we're calling on object status, but I think it would probably look cleaner if I just did it like that. So we'll do it like that. So there we go. And that's pretty much it. That's gonna let you um, have the damage. Now we changed some stuff around, so let me make sure everything works right before um, I give you the final code and, and it doesn't work um, like I did with that alarm. We don't want that to happen. So boom. That spaced it out a little bit more. It actually looks a little bit nicer. And you see the damage pop-up works. Let's let it collide with us. Boom. Minus 20. And you see when it collides with us, it's actually issuing it right on the player. Boom. 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 Cool. All right. So that's it for this tutorial, how to do damage pop-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below with special requests. And let me know you if you enjoyed it or not, um, what you're having trouble with. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. I'm having a lot of fun with Game Maker Studio 2. Hopefully you guys are too. We're going to make a bunch more games. We're going to polish off this one. We're going to keep working on it. Um, I've already got a pause menu set up, which we're going to do next. Um, and probably elaborate on upgrading or something like that, get power-ups and stuff. Anyway, uh, a lot of ideas for the future in this project, and we'll work in a new, a new project. I got a lot of requests for, well, actually like three or four, uh, to do a platformer. So we'll do a platformer next um, after this game, but we still have a few more things to, to cover in this project. So yeah, that's about it for this episode. Um, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I have lots of RPG Maker MV tutorials if you're into RPG Maker. And I plan to do a lot more Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials. And I have, I don't know, a dozen or so already. So over this next year, I'm going to put out a lot of them, possibly 100 or so. So um, if you're interested in learning more about Game Maker Studio 2, please subscribe to the channel. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.